and I'm really excited to have you with me in my studio, Sweaty Soul Studio. Um, this has been something I've been wanting to do for a really long time and I was delighted when I shared it on my Instagram page and you were all extremely eager for me to get to videoing. So here I am, I'm going to share my um, tips on how to work into a crow pose. So it'll be a short class. We'll work on strengthening our core, our pelvic floor, and warming up the shoulders. So please do take it at your own pace. I'll always offer loads of modifications. There'll be steps. So whenever you feel it's too much for you, you either stay there, you work on your breath with physical posture, or you take a little break. You can always come into a child's pose. So today, I'm going to use a block as my one prop. If you don't have a block at home, if you're at home doing this, and you can always use a stack of books, that's fine. Okay, so let's get started. We're going to come to our backs. So come down onto your backs. If you want, you can begin in reclined back panasala, like myself, um, bringing the soles of the feet together and allowing your knees to come out wide. If this is too much for your hips, you can either just bring the soles of the feet to the mat or bring blocks underneath the outside thighs. Bring your hands onto the belly. Walk your shoulder blades in underneath the back. And just begin to bring some focus to the breath. So perhaps if you're comfortable closing the eyes, begin to flutter the eyes shut. We're going to take one deep inhale through the nose. Exhale, open the mouth. And just let everything go. So beginning to let go of the day that you've had, to let go of the week you're having so far, or any expectations for the week that lie ahead. And just beginning to focus on your breath. So we're going to try and focus on a Ujjayi breath throughout class. If that's not available, don't worry. It just means that we're bringing a slight restriction into the back of your throat. So with that slight restriction, you're breathing in and out through the nose. Imagine you were fogging a pane of glass or a mirror, writing a little look at maybe. <laughs> and that should find that uh, deep Ujjayi breath creating almost like an oceanic quality to the breath. It might sound like the waves of an ocean or like a Darth Vader breath. So with your hands on your belly, just noticing your belly gently rising and falling. This rhythm should be a really nice focus, bringing an almost meditative quality to your breath. To the presence of your body on your mat. So like I said throughout class, always feel free to take a break. We're going to get moving and begin by waking up the core. So drawing the knees together slowly, bring the soles of the feet to the mat. Now you'll see maybe that I have an arch underneath or a space between my middle back and the mat. I'd like you to eliminate that arch, so press your middle back down into the mat. So that means that I'm going to be tucking my tailbone slightly and rocking my pelvis toward me. So my hip bones are going to move toward my lowest rib. From here, I'm going to bring my arms to the mat, palms face down, and then slowly bring one leg at a time up into a tabletop position. So you'll see my knees are stacked over my hips, and my shins are trying to create a tabletop or parallel to the mat. From here, I'm going to inhale deeply, keep my middle back pressing down, belly drawing down to the mat, and as you exhale, just hinge from your hip joint and tap the right toe to the mat. Bring it back up as you inhale. Exhale, tap the left toe. So continue this movement. You are hinging from the hip, but you are not moving the hips with um, this movement. So we're trying to keep the pelvis stable in a neutral position or a tilted forward position. And your belly hugging down toward the spine. If this isn't enough for you, if you're not feeling enough, you can take a more advanced variation or stay here. So the more advanced means that we're going to extend the leg and point the toe, let the leg hover above the mat instead of tapping the toe. So you can continue with this if you like or first variation. With each exhale, you're either tapping the toe or extending the leg for 10. Continue, nine, eight, Seven, keep that belly hugging in for six, five, shoulders soft, four, three, two, one. Bring your knees in towards your chest, hands to your shins. 
From here, second core exercise. You're going to peel your head, neck, and shoulders away from the mat. Keep that length through the back of the neck. As you can see, I'm not dropping the head back or hugging the chin toward the chest. Extend your left leg and wrap your fingers around the right shin. We're going to alternate here. So inhale, exhale, switch it up. Inhale, exhale, switch it up. So continue here. Hugging with each exhale. The knee in towards your torso and extending, fully engaging that bottom leg. Keep the length through the back of the neck. Keep your shoulders lifting away from the mat and shin reaching up toward the sky for 10. Nine, eight, seven, six. Nice control, slow movements. Five, four, three, two, and one. Really nice. Take a little break. Bring your knees as wide as your armpits. And take some nice big belly breaths. So really allow the belly to expand. Allow the skin on the torso to stretch. You can sway from side to side if that feels good. Now from here, we're going to come into Vakasana or Crow Pose on our back. So this for me is one of my favorite um, core exercises. It's brilliant for any inversion, any um, headstand, handstand, uh, pinch my arasana, any of your um, poses that you really need a strong core for this, this uh, exercise is brilliant. So it's basically Crow Pose on your back instead of balancing on your hands. So if you're a beginner, it's a really good way to practice without that fear of falling or the difficult um, element of the balancing. Okay, so you're going to bring your big toes together, knees as wide as your shoulders. You're going to stretch your arms up toward the ceiling and flex at your wrists. So you see my palms, imagine they're pressing into the ceiling. Now, I peel my head, neck and shoulders away from the mat and then I bring my knees toward my triceps. So you'll see my lower back is curled gently away from the mat. Now I'm not soft here, I'm engaging. So I'm pressing my triceps into my knees and the knees are pressing into the triceps. My toes are pointed, I'm looking past my hands and I'm breathing for 10. Pull up through pelvic floor for nine, eight, seven, hug, hug your belly down, six, five, four, shoulders soft, three, two, one, and release. So catch your breath very active in your belly. You should feel a lot of heat after that. So we're going to do it for a second round and this time perhaps um, a more advanced variation. You stick with that, you take breaks whenever you need, or we come into our one-legged Vakasana on our back. So once again, point your toes, knees as wide as armpits, stretch your arms up. Peel head, neck and shoulders away, knees to triceps and hug them toward each other. Inhale, exhale, extend your right leg long, point the toe. Bring it back slowly, knee to tricep. Extend your left leg. Keep your pelvis nice and steady. Keep moving with your breath, extending leg as you exhale. Continue, left leg long, bring it in. One more time on each side, right leg long. You're pressing the knee to the tricep as the opposite leg extends. Bring it back in and release. Deep breath in through your nose and exhale through your mouth. Really nice. Hands behind your thighs, rocking up, rocking back. So rocking up and back, massaging out the spine. And from here, we'll rock all the way up, cross at your ankles and find your way into a tabletop position. So, I'm going to keep having to fix my um, top, awful top, okay? Um, shouldn't have chosen it for my first YouTube video, but anyway. Um, so we're going to come into <clears throat> a tabletop position, just wake up the spine a little bit. So hands underneath shoulders, knees underneath hips, come through your cat cow. Inhale, flex the spine, or sorry, compress your spine. Lift your tailbone, lift your gaze forward as you exhale, now flexing. Round through the back, hug your navel towards your spine, drop tailbone and chin to chest. Again, inhale. Shoulders away from ears, compress your spine. Exhale, cat, round like an angry cat. Okay, come back to a neutral position. <clears throat> we're going to do, sorry, excuse me. We're going to practice some cat poses, which are really helpful for activating our belly again and really heating up the shoulders. So I'm going to get you, see here my hands are underneath my shoulders, I'm going to walk them in 
front of my shoulders. We're going to keep our gaze between our, our hands. And like a cast, angry cast, we're going to drop the tailbone, round through the back, and pull our belly in. We're going to hold it here. So we're not um, just hanging out here. There's a lot of activity. Our arms are really working to press the mat away. Our fingers are spread wide. I'm pulling the belly in. And from here, I want you to inhale, and as you exhale, you're going to shift the shoulders forward, but keep that rounding through the back. Come back, inhale. Exhale, shift the shoulders forward, shoulders over wrists. Again, keep pulling the belly in. Exhale, shift forward. Keep pressing them out of way. You should feel this in your shoulders one more time. Shift forward, and sit your hips back toward your heels, child's pose. Soften the arms, soften the forehead to the mat. So this is the pose I'm saying that you can come to at any stage throughout your practice. A really nice way just to give your body time to tune back in with the breath. Okay, and from here we're going to do another exercise, very similar this time, hands underneath the shoulders. Okay, again, cat rounding. Drop your tailbone, gaze between your fingers, pull your belly in. We're going to hold. Imagine I have my hands between your shoulder blades and you are trying to press my hand away. So lifting your middle back toward the ceiling, your upper back toward the ceiling. And release. We're going to do that again, this time stepping into your plank. So a really good um, warm up for plank and a way to train or learn what kind of shape your back should be in for your plank position, especially our upper back. So again, hands underneath shoulders, you're going to press them out of way, so find that rounding upper back. Extend your right leg back, extend your left leg back. So I want you to hug your belly in, tuck your tailbone toward your navel. From here, inhale, flex your feet, exhale, shift your shoulders past your wrists, come to the tips of your toes. Inhale, moving back. Your body stays in that straight line, plank position. Exhale, shift forward. Again, inhale, shift back. Exhale, shift forward. Inhale. Exhale for five. Inhale. Exhale for four. Keep moving. Inhale. Exhale for three. Two. Slow control. Keep pulling the knee in. One, and release. I think I might have skipped a few numbers there, but I can't think when I'm <laughs> and challenging myself that much. Okay, take a little break. One more core exercise, I promise. Okay, before we come into a little bit more of fluid movement. Okay. So we're going to come back into our plank. There are going to be two options. Beginner's option, you come into tabletop. You extend the right leg back, you hug the knee in toward the nose. Extend it back, up between your hands, hug the knee and point the toe. Okay, second option. You're going to come into your plank. Okay, so shoulders just past your wrists, rounding through upper back, you hover the right leg above your mat. Inhale, exhale, knee to nose. Stretch it back, inhale, exhale, knee to nose. Inhale, stretch it back, that's two, three. Again, four, hug your belly in round. Five, one more, six. Straight to the opposite side, release the right leg, lift the left. Inhale, exhale, round. For six, exhale, round and hug for five. Keep your shoulders over your wrist for four. Keep moving for three, two, last one. Hug the thigh to the belly. Release it back, release the foot. Oh, my shoulders. Okay, take a break. So from here, let's like just sit on your shins. We're going to just open up the wrist a little bit. So bring your thumbs inside of your uh, palms and wrap your fingers around, and just circle out the wrists. If you want a nice foot stretch, you tuck your toes, and sit on your heels. So this is a lot more challenging than it looks. After a few breaths, 
Your feet might start to burn. Try to breathe through us. Okay, so I'm gonna need to take a little break here. Just to catch my breath. Really important that you're always breathing deeply, okay? Your breath is the most important part of your practice. Okay, shake it. From here, we're going to make our way into a downward facing dog. Okay, hands shoulder width. So from your tabletop, I like to walk my hands just an inch or two in front of the shoulders. Spread the fingers wide, tuck the toes, lift the hips up and back. Okay, so your feet are parallel with each other. You should not be able to see your heels behind your toes. If your back is rounded, which a lot of people do because of tight hamstrings, I'd like you to bend your knees. Your heart reaches back towards your thigh. Your triceps internally rotate, so I like to think of our, uh, eyes in my armpits, and they're looking toward each other. Tuck your chin towards your chest and look back. Lift the bum, feel free to straighten the legs, allow heels to sink toward the mat. From your roll forward into your plank position, Drop your knees, untuck your toes, lower to the belly. Inhale, lift, cobra. Heart lift, elbow hugging in, belly, or legs engaged, sorry. Tuck your toes, downward facing dog. Again, inhale, roll forward. This time, again, that same variation, or lower, chaturanga. Lift, up dog, or cobra. Exhale, downward facing dog. Okay, from here step your left foot in towards center, slightly float the right leg up, keep your hips square. Exhale, hug the right knee toward the right tricep. Bring it back up, inhale. Exhale, hug it to your armpit. Hold, and maybe you could drop it to the wrist. Pull it back up, drop it to the wrist. Pull it back up one more time, drop, pull, Pull it to center, step it between your hands. Runner's lunge, inhale, stretch your heart forward, reach back through the left heel. Exhale, step the left foot to the front of your mat. Inhale to lengthen, maybe hands will slide to shins. Exhale, fold deeply. Come to standing, float your arms all the way up overhead. Hands release to prayer. Like I said, I need to fix my top. Inhale, float arms up. Exhale. Arms come down, hinging from your hips. Inhale, hands to thighs, lift the gaze. Plant your hands and just step both feet back into plank. Inhale, plank any variation, either lower to the belly with knees dropped or lower halfway chaturanga. Inhale, up dog or cobra. Exhale, moving through the toes, down dog. Step your right foot in. Inhale, float the left leg up, keep your hips square. Exhale, knee to left tricep. Shoulders over wrists. Inhale, bring it back up. Exhale to left armpit. Drop the knee down, slide it down your arm, lift it back up, use your belly. Drop it down, slide it back up one more time. Drop it down, slide it back up, bring it to center, step the foot between your hands. Feet on separate tracks, inhale, stretch your heart forward, right leg engaged. Exhale, hop the right foot to the front of your mat, inhale. Flat back, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, come to standing. Float your arms overhead. Hands release to prayer. Inhale, float arms overhead. Exhale, swan dive forward, leading with your heart. Try to keep the length through your spine. Inhale, lift the gaze. You either step to plank or you hop. Plant your hands. Hop into chaturanga. Lift the heart, down dog. Really nice. Okay. From here, we're going to come straight into a squat position. So you're going to step your feet as wide as your mat, toes point out, sit down nice and low. Bring your hands to prayer, elbows to inner knees. Okay, so if this is too much, you can sit on a block. Okay, then stay here. If you can, elbows inside of knees. Inhale, lift your hips. Exhale, drop. Inhale, lift your hips. Exhale, drop. Keep moving. Inhale, lift. Exhale, drop. 
Last time, inhale, exhale, hold for five. Lift the heart, drop your hips, four, three, soften your shoulders, relax the muscles of your face, two, hug your knees in towards your outer arms, one, and release, hands to mat, lift your hips, toe, heel your feet into hip width distance, soft bend in your knees, opposite hand, opposite arm, or opposite elbow, sway, side to side. You can probably hear I'm pretty out of breath. <laughs> this, um, having to demonstrate the whole class is really hard. <laughs> Usually in class, I don't demonstrate the whole thing, so it's a good challenge for me, anyway. So, um, from here, we're going to practice our full crow pose. Exciting. So, two things I want you to think about. One thing is your gaze, your drishti should be forward. So, a lot of people um, get very excited about doing an arm balance. And they want to see, am I balancing, am I balancing? And they're constantly looking back at their toes to see if their toes have come away from the mat. I promise you, you will know if your toes are not touching the mat, okay? So please do keep your gaze forward. It will prevent you from falling forward, which is what we don't want or what everyone is afraid of. Second thing is, a lot of people think it's shoulder strength that is the most important, but really it's your pelvic floor strength. So I want you to imagine like you're going to the toilet and you have to hold it in. So that sucking or lifting in sensation through your pelvic floor muscles is really important. So using the block just means that there is less effort in lifting your hips because your hips are a little more high already away from the mat. So I'm going to start with the block. So what you're going to do is bring the block to your mat. You're going to step onto the block. Now, from here, it's hand positioning. So, similar to down dog about shoulder width distance, if you don't know what that is, you can always bring your elbows to the mat, wrap opposite hand around opposite elbow, and then bring your hands to the mat. So that is about shoulder width distance. So, again, one, two, feet to the mat. Your knees, I like to bring them high into my armpits. It depends on you, okay? So, some people prefer middle of their triceps, so a little further down the arm. You're going to bring a micro bend into the elbow because you need a little shelf to bring the weight of your body onto. So the first step is your hands are going to come to the mat shoulder width, you spread your fingers nice and wide. So I'm going to lift my hips. Now like I said, drishti, gaze forward, hips lifting. So that's your first um, exercise, is simply lifting your hips, maybe shifting the weight forward. So you will feel the weight shift from your feet and more so into your fingers. You will see I like to lift my knuckles. So I'm using the finger pads to really um, stop me from falling forward. Second step, lift, shift forward, point one toe, bring the heel toward the bum. Again, shift forward, point the toe, heel toward the bum, opposite side. So that's the second thing, remember like I said, you listen to yourself, if that's too much, you stick with the first variation. Third step, shift the weight forward, float one toe, float the other toe. Okay, so I'm using my, lift, my hips to lift, gaze is forward, toes pointing. So like I said, you don't have to use the block, you can just do it from the mat. Um, some beginners might even find it easier without the block. So um, maybe try both, see what's easier for you, and give it a go, okay? I'm going to do it one time without the block, just so you can see, it's exactly the same. Lift your heels, balls of the feet, look forward. If you'd like, you can shoot it back into your chaturanga, moving through, whoops, sorry, vinyasa. Okay, take a break, child's pose. Maybe this time bring your knees together, arms back by your feet. From here we're just going to do a little cool down and stretch out our shoulders. So I'd like you to bring your left arm across your body. Just bring the hand behind the tricep or the elbow and hug it across your body. Breathe into the back of your shoulder behind the scapula. Nice. 
I'm probably very red in the face. <laughs> I hope you are too. And then bring the elbow behind the head. Press the head back into the elbow so that your spine is nice and long. Drop your rib cage down, drop your tailbone down. Don't worry if the elbow isn't behind the head. It's not really important, just as long as you're feeling the stretch. Release, come to the opposite side. Right arm across the body, hand to back of elbow or tricep, hug it across. Almost as if you were gently pulling it across your body. Continue to reconnect with the breath in and out through the nose. And elbow behind the head. forward and back. And then from here we're going to come down onto our back. So I'd like you to come to your bum. You can bring the hands behind your back and it can be really nice just to roll out the spine again. So rolling down, rolling up. And you can do that a few more times and then eventually we'll just rock all the way down onto the back. Bring the soles of the feet to the mat. So I want you to walk your heels in towards your bum. So we're going to come into a bridge pose to stretch out the belly and the abdominal wall. Your feet are parallel with each other, arms by the side of your body. I want you to tuck your tailbone again, feel your entire spine on the mat. If you need a block between your thighs, um, that can be good for beginners. Lift your hips all the way up. And lift, 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 lift. So keep imagining you're squeezing through your inner thighs. So even if you don't have a block, it can be good to visualize that you have one there. Breathe for five. Feel that nice stretch in the front of your quadriceps. Four, three, two, one. So take a little break. Walk your feet to the edges of your mat and allow your knees to fall in toward each other. So in your bridge pose, you don't want your toes pointing out or in. They want to be straight toward the front of your mat, parallel. You also don't want the knees falling in or out. So they stacked. They stay stacked over your ankles. One more time, walk your heels in towards your bum. You might even be able to tickle your heels. Tuck your tailbone and lift it up. Another option here, walk your shoulders underneath the back and interlock your fingers underneath your body. Chin toward the chest, lift the hips for five, four, three, two, one. Release the shoulders, the arms, and rounding all the way down from upper to middle to lower. Take a little break. And from here, we're going to extend the left leg, bring the right knee in toward the chest, hug it down toward the armpit. So try to keep, keep equal weight through left and right side of your back. Feel that compression in the right hip. And then we'll twist. Direct the right knee to the left, using the left arm, and stretch your right arm out wide. Allow the body to be heavy. You don't have to push the knee down towards the mat. You just allow it to be heavy, to be soft. The right hip will lift and stack over the left. And you should feel a really nice release for the lower back, a twist for the belly, the spine. Back to center, mindfully switch it out. So bring the left knee in, right leg long. The right leg just is heavy on the mat. Hug the left knee down toward the armpit rather than pulling it onto the rib cage. Breathe deeply into your belly. Feel the belly press against your thigh. And then when you're ready, you can come into the twist and you will come to the uh, right, look to the left. Walk the shoulder blades underneath your back. 
arms can come out wide as well or close to the body, the palms will face up. Close your eyes and begin to let go. So you can begin to let your breath return to its natural pace. Let go of movement. Begin to allow quietness and stillness to move through your body. On the soles of your feet, feel it in your ankles, your shins, your calves. Allow the thighs to be heavy. The belly just gently rising and falling with your natural pace of breath. The backs of the arms sinking, the backs of the shoulders soft. Relax the muscles of your face around your jaw, your eyes, your brow. Finally accept that you have done enough and that you have nowhere else to be but here in this moment on your mat. You can take as long as you like in your Shavasana. I would advise five to 10 minutes or maybe even pausing the video for a moment. Find stillness, allow your thoughts to keep floating by. So try not to attach with your thoughts. When we're ready, we're going to roll over onto the right side of our body into a fetal position, perhaps making a cushion with your right arm for your head. And we'll come all the way up into seated. So, trying to keep the eyes closed if you can. Come to a comfortable cross-legged seated position, perhaps sit on a block if that's better for you. Sit up tall through the spine, shoulders away from ears. reconnect with your breath. So tuning into the effects of your practice today, thank yourself for coming to your mat and for dedicating time to your body and your breath. I will close with a quote. I always do at the end of every class. If I quit now, I'll be back to where I started. And when I started, I so desperately wanted to be where I am now. Bring your hands to prayer at the heart, connecting in with your breath and with yourself. And namaste. Thank you so much for practicing with me today. And I would love if you subscribed to my channel. I'll get that wording better. It's my first time doing this, so it's a little bit um, nerve-wracking, and uh, I promise I'll get into the flow of it a bit more. But I hope you enjoyed the video. Please do comment either on this video or on any Instagram post. And um, my mommy pocket is my page, or Sweaty Soul Studio. Um, and tell me what you'd like me to teach the next time. If there's any poses or sequences you are trying to perfect or strengthen, I'd be happy to help. So please do subscribe and maybe share if you enjoyed the video. Thank you so much and namaste.